maybe you have never understood why we talk about being born in the nature, in the sinful nature. Uh-huh. I think today it was so clear yeah. that actually after Adam fell, yeah. the children he got, he got in his own nature, yeah. not the nature that God had made yeah. man. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. <laughs> so that means in, before that, there was a life, but that life was not so serious. Before that, it's not like everyone else was lying. No, but now the reality that has now come is more real than the physical. And then the life there, it is the life that Jesus came to bring, the life that he came to introduce to us because Jesus, he is the first begotten son of God. Hello and glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. It's good to be here again on our Marvelous Believer show. This is a show where we teach and discuss and learn what Christ has done for us and who he has made us. It's always very nice to be here. It's always excites my heart when we come here because I always know there is a word for us. I always, my heart is expectant. And even today, my heart is expectant. Every time I come to this show, I know there is a word. It cannot leave me the same and God will speak to me. Something new will be triggered in my life. There is something new that I will learn. That is why we come to the Marvelous Believer Show every Monday. And we are on YouTube. In case you've missed any of our shows, you can always go back and find it. And uh, as before we go to the word, I want to encourage you to share this link with someone, with a loved one, with someone that you know. Because the word has a spirit and its life. It will always change someone. It will always help someone. It will always uh, be an asset or an increase to the kingdom of God. This is the Marvelous Believer Show. I'm your host, Lucy Lepore. And thank you for finding time to tune in and to be with us and to fellowship with us. Uh, we really, really do appreciate. As we go to the word of God, I just want to, to uh, give us some food for thought. Jesus said, I am the way the truth, and the life. And uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he later said, I have come that you may have life and have life in abundance. You know, when we get born again, actually every time we give our lives to Jesus, we already are on the way. We already are in the way. But there is need. That's why we come every time and we learn more because there is need to even know the truth. It's not just about being on the way. There is need to know the truth and have life because he came that we may have life and have life in abundance. But this life in abundance, we arrive there when we have got on the way, known the truth and entered into life. There is a realm that is called life in abundance. And it is our desire that we all get there and we dwell there and we understand that we are there and we live it to the maximum. He said, I have come that you may have life and have life in abundance. So as we continue learning and fellowshipping and enjoying learning the word of God, we desire that we may reach a realm that is called life in abundance. There is something like that. And that's our desire, marvelous believers. So tonight again, uh, we are excited to be here and I'm not alone in the studio. I am uh, with a minister of the gospel that is no longer, I wanted to say a guest, but I think he's no longer a guest to us. We know him, we've been with him several times, Minister Bonnie Glorious, he's a teacher of the word. He has an interesting passion for the word of God. And I'm always so honored when we are able to bring you uh, Minister Bonnie Glorious. It's always a honor and uh, we appreciate God for you. We appreciate what he's doing in your life. And I want to just allow you to take over so that you can teach what God has put in your spirit. Amazing. Thank you so much, Pastor Lucy. It's a great blessing. It's an honor to be here again. Yes, I'm no longer a guest. <laughs> well, as believer is my hope. And that name defines me. It defines everyone who has believed in Christ. And it's so big and it's happening. It is so amazing. And we, we can't cease thanking God for everything that God is doing in your life, Pastor Lucy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's a time God promised that he will give us pastors Mm. according to his own heart. <laughs> so wow. God God looks for people, he places his heart in them, and then he allows himself to live through them. Wow. So that is what the Lord has done. And Marvelous Believer is not just hosted by a beautiful woman, it is hosted by God himself. 
in a, in a, in a body and so allow me to pray before we we proceed thank you lord thank you for your love for us wow it is so amazing thank you for all that you have done for us you took us and you have brought us into the abundance which is in Christ Jesus and today we come and we are here to grow into what you have already done in us our father we no longer need to remain in the way we have come to the realm of life and that is where we are reigning in thank you lord jesus for your word it is so marvelous thank you for the listener thank you for everyone who will ever tune into this and i know it is going to bring an understanding to them thank you for using a language that we will understand in jesus name we give thanks in prayer amen 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 and with your permission uh, <laughs> allow me to go to the word uh this is a wonderful thing that the lord has placed in many of us he has placed in the body of christ god in his own infinity he wants us to understand something about his own about his own plan his own everything that he has done inside the word of god and when you study the bible the bible is a book of life the bible is having one subject all along when you study from genesis when you go to exodus when you go to leviticus when you go to all the books in the bible first of all in what we call the old testament what we call the historical events that took place when jesus was here in the body and what happened after his death his burial and his resurrection there is something that is so common all along the whole bible and that is about salvation praise the lord and salvation goes beyond believing in someone who is up there it goes beyond believing somebody who we have been told that he came inside our life going beyond the the, the normal mediocre life which have been so downcasted called the christian life but it's not so low it is it goes beyond what we know as the christian faith praise the lord the the life that god wanted to bring to this world the the access from the heavenlies to this world that god wanted to do for all mankind is all wrapped up in the bible praise the lord and so every time we we bring some things from the bible it teaches us the mind of god paul said something he said that i have written to you before in a few words so that when you read you will understand what is my understanding that is what is the wisdom of god that we may have the understanding of what god had really planned for mankind praise the lord and so uh from the book of genesis before man did anything god came he created heaven and he created the earth and then the earth was without form and it was void but god says let there be light so that shows before anyone can do anything god had a plan for the human for the human race and for us to understand why god brought us into this world why the world is the way it is today why the world had to receive a savior from heaven to come and bring salvation we have to go back to king to the king himself for us to understand what was his original plan from the beginning praise the lord and so today we are going to go around something we've talked here before about sonship that we have received okay so uh when we read the the first verses in the historical events of Jesus Christ that is in the book of Matthew in the book of Mark in the book of John and even Luke there is something that is so notable he begins by writing the genealogy of Jesus from Jesus all the way back to Adam okay so god begins the entering or the ushering in of our lord Jesus Christ by a genealogy which was from Jesus going head way long back to Adam praise the lord and then from there in the new testament when every other epistle is beginning there is no genealogy <laughs> praise the lord because god had a certain plan he had a specific plan and there is something that god did after jesus landed in the scene 
And that thing brings all the difference. But never forget this. When we are ushering in Jesus, we begin with a genealogy. But when we are ushering Jesus out, there is no genealogy, but there is something that happens again. Uh, when we were in back in school, we were taught that we had two creation accounts. And that was the first creation account in Genesis 1 and the second creation account in Genesis chapter 2. And then again, after doing a thorough study of the scriptures, we realized that we have two creation accounts of man. That is the first creation account when Adam and Eve were created. And then the second one is when Jesus died and rose again. There is a new creation that began there. And Paul elaborates it further in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse 21. Okay, So now we have two accounts of creation. That is the first creation and the second creation. When we read the book of Romans, where we won't read today, there is somewhere where the Lord... The, where the Lord speaks through Paul and says that through one man, sin entered the world. But then again, it brings a disclaimer and says that through another one man, there is a righteousness that came into the world. That shows substitution. Okay, And so uh, in Genesis, when God created man, God created man in his own image after his own likeness. Praise the Lord. And then when we come to the, the second creation, the second creation happened in a very mysterious way, but we are going to look at it today. Praise the Lord. So uh, in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26, he says that God made man in his own image, in his own likeness. Okay, So that was the, the original plan of God. But after the fall of man, we know what happened. And after the fall, there's something that happened that repeated itself. Praise the Lord. Adam had other children, and in the having of other children, let us go to the book of Genesis chapter 5 from verse 1. He says, this is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man in the likeness of God, made he him. Praise the Lord. He says, he made male and female, created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. So this is a creation that happened and God made them in the image and in the right likeness of God. But when Adam ate the fruit, there is a fall that happened and the genealogy was corrupted. So what happened? And verse number three, and Adam lived 130 years and begat a son, now not in the image of God, not in the likeness of God, but in the likeness of Adam himself. The King James says, and Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his likeness after his image and called his name Seth. So there's a, there's a likeness and an image that followed the one that God had made them in his own image and likeness. We say that all of us have been made in the image and the likeness of God, right? But now the image there is not physical because there are some people who are lame since childhood, but they are not in the image of God. So there's another image that God made man in his own image, which now it happened in Genesis chapter 1. Okay, So after God made him in his own image, then man was deceived by the devil and the fall happened. And so there's a fall that happened and man fell short of the glory of God. That means man came from the original plan of God, from the genealogy of God, because God had his own genealogy. Because image and likeness means he looks exactly like him, and he, the likeness is that one of him. When you looked at Adam, you will realize how God is. Praise the Lord. And now, that all happened, and the genealogy was corrupted. That's why when God is beginning the book of Luke, he begins with the genealogy of Jesus, and Finally, it comes to the place of Adam. So from Adam to Jesus, the genealogy was the same. But now when Jesus entered the scene, there's something so notable that happened, praise the Lord. And the first time in history, for the very first time in human history, another genealogy was introduced. First of all, we will check out how Jesus came into the scene, hallelujah, and see the plan of God for salvation. Because again, we cannot define salvation only from the perspective of sin. Again, salvation has something to do with the nature that we have, with the life that we live. It has something to do with how we live life, how we view life, our own nature, how we are, what is our substance. When you come and lay a hold of our nature, who are we? Praise the Lord. Because salvation cannot only 
remain in the realm of sin. It goes somewhere above, beyond even sin. And it goes to the place of changing the nature. Praise the Lord. And then he says in the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 34, when the angel came to Mary, the angel told Mary, you are going to have a son. Praise the Lord. And you are going to have a child. The, the angel gives him instructions of the name of the child and everything that will happen to him. But then he says, uh, Mary believed in what the angel told him. And Mary asked a question, Luke 1, 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Praise the Lord. In all humanity, we have been told that for one to bring a child, there must be a correlation between a male and a female. Praise the Lord. There, there must be ha, There must be the presence of a man and a woman for us to have a child. Amen. But now, there is something that is changing here. The angel comes to Mary, says to Mary, you are going to have a child. And that child is going to come from you. But then Mary questions it. How, how is it going to happen, seeing that I know no man, that I've not met with any man? Then the angel says, because we, we know the nature that comes only by birth. Praise the Lord. We are the father and the mother is related. But now, there is a difference that is coming in our place. He says, and the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore also, the holy thing or the holy child which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Praise the Lord. Wow. <laughs> For the first time in the biblical history, there is a change in the way things happen. The first mention of the, of the word Son of God is mentioned in the book of Luke. Chapter 1, where the Son of God is coming to action. This has never been had. That's why salvation sometimes is not easy to explain to us who have been, in, who have been studying science, biology <laughs> for all that long. Praise the Lord. But now, when, when the Word of God is bringing this subject, He is teaching us that now there is a new way of bringing up sons. Praise the Lord. And this son is when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and then he will overshadow you and then you will be filled and in the feeling you will conceive a son. So a son here is conceived when the Holy Spirit comes upon Mary and then Mary in her own self, she, she conceives. Praise the Lord. And then a conception happens. Praise the Lord. And in this place, uh, the, the, maybe someone can say, no, that cannot be possible. But then, Jumping to verse 37, he says, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Praise the Lord. Maybe with us, we have never seen something happen of that sort. But this time around, it is happening. And it is happening in the genealogy where Adam had it in past. But now God is bringing something new. God is promising a son. And that son comes through Mary. Praise the Lord. And that is where we, are, we, are, we have just begun the place of defining what it really means to be saved or to have salvation. Because salvation goes beyond a normal human being believing in God, praying every day, sharing the gospel. Then afterwards we will rest and then we will wait for the Messiah. <laughs> we will wait for the Lord to come. Praise the Lord. It goes beyond that. The normal human life. The, 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 the normal human life has been brought out of the place and then a new life has been introduced. And that is what Pastor Lucy mentioned at the beginning, that it is not just the way. And Jesus, Jesus came and Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. So that means, in, before that, there was a life. But that life was not so serious. It was not the real life. He says, I am the truth. It means, before that, it's not like everyone else was lying. No, but now, the reality that has now come is more real than the physical. And then the life there, it is the life that Jesus came to bring, the life that he came to introduce to us because Jesus, he is the first begotten son of God. And Jesus, yes, he's called, at that time, he was called the only begotten son of God. But after his death, after the burial and the resurrection, he brought forth a new, a new lineage 
of sons of God. Praise the Lord. And now that lineage of the sons of God is going to be, has been introduced through Jesus. So that life, the only way to the Father, or the only way, because again, when we come to defining the, the, the part B of that verse, he says, no man comes to the Father except through Jesus. Mm. It, is, it goes beyond just the place where uh, we see Jesus is the only using his name in Jesus' name. When we pray, we must use the name so that the Father can answer us. <laughs> it goes beyond that. It goes to a point of believing that Jesus is God who came in a flesh. Praise the Lord. And then when he came in the flesh, he also introduced us to a certain life. Because uh, the beginning now of the Christian life, the end of Jesus, or the end of Jesus' life in the body, was the beginning of another life of other men who reigned in this life like Jesus did. We are speaking about the sons of God. We are defining the sons of God. For us to understand the sons of God, we have to understand the first son of God. Praise the Lord. Like when we used to study back in high school, for you to understand biology form 4, you must go through biology form 1 to understand the definition, what it meant, did they have branches. And so now, for you to understand the form 4 part of it, now for you to understand who you really are in Christ, for you to understand what it really means to be born again, we have to understand about the Son of God. So uh, maybe as we come to a close, there's something that somebody came and found Jesus. Now Jesus has grown up in the body and he's been in this world and the way he used to live his life was not ordinary. Praise the Lord. He has introduced the life of the sons of God. He has showed us how sons of God rule in this world, praise the Lord. And it's good for us to understand what it means to be a son of God. He says in John chapter 3, verse 1, uh, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. And then, now the, we will take it from the comment of Nicodemus. Nicodemus says, when he came to Jesus by night, he says, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that you do except God be with him. Praise the Lord. So now, when the Son of God came to the scene, when other ordinary people observe his life, it is not normal. No man has ever opened a blind eye before Jesus came. But now this man came and he opened a blind eye. No man has ever raised Okay, there is a man who raised a dead person in the Old Testament, the likes of Elisha and Elijah. But now, this man, he's doing it in a very, in a very normal way. And then now, Nicodemus asks him, uh, gives a compliment to him. He says, no man can do these things except God be with him. What did it really mean? It meant that no man can do the things that are happening or the things that Jesus used to do unless his, his nature of life or his genealogy was different. Praise the Lord. And in answering that, he ushers us into the, new, the newness or the, the new kingdom that was to follow. He says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So before, when Jesus was being born, he is introduced to a genealogy, and then that one was the first birth. So Jesus went through the whole place of being born and then being born again, being born of God. Praise the Lord. So when the genealogy ends, he begins a new one. When the Holy Spirit filled Mary, and then he was born. Praise the Lord. And then when he was born, he says, no man can experience the kingdom of God or no man can demonstrate the kingdom of God except that man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. That is to observe the kingdom of God working in his life. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, uh, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Then verse 6 is where our emphasis is. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. So it we were born of flesh, but then again, there's a new birth of the Spirit that came when we believed in the gospel. When Mary believed the good news that came through the angel, this specific thing happened to her. So for us, when we believe in the gospel, the good news that came to us through the teaching of the gospel, that is what exactly happened. The Holy Spirit came upon us or he entered us and he regenerated. Regeneration means to change a genealogy. <laughs> uh, that, that one is seen in the book of Titus. Uh, in the book of Titus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If any man has believed in Jesus, he is born again. And that birth has happened by the virtue of the Holy Spirit and by virtue of believing in Jesus. In the book of Titus chapter 3 from verse 4. And he says, But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior towards man, appeared. So salvation began by the, the love of God being demonstrated. The love of God appeared. So he says, But after that, the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, Towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So this happened through Jesus Christ. When he appeared, when we believed in Jesus, there's a regeneration that happened. We were born again. A genealogy was changed. It is Yes, you have a father and mother, but your nature has been changed. You have been born again. And in that born again, you have been made a son of God. Hallelujah. So you and Christ, there is no big difference. You have been made one with him. And so when God looks at Jesus, his son, and then looks at you, you too look alike to him. And what Jesus did, even Jesus said, more than what I do, you will surely do because when I go, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will send you a helper. And when the Holy Spirit came, he regenerated us. He changed the genealogy. And today we have a new person in us. You have been born again, except you are born again of spirit, of flesh, and of the spirit. You cannot enter the kingdom of God. And so, because that has happened, when you, whatever you see in the word of God, that is your reality. It defines you. And so that is what is happening. Yes, Pastor Lucy. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. I don't know how else uh, we can explain or to understand this new life, yeah. the reality of new creation, yeah. the reality of regeneration, yeah. the reality of a new genealogy. Yeah. Maybe you have never understood why we talk about being born in the nature, in the sinful nature. Uh -huh. I think today it was so clear yeah. that actually after Adam fell, yeah. The children he got, he begot in his own nature. Yeah. Not the nature that God had made yeah. man. Yeah. In the nature of Adam. And that's why we are always, we talk of people being born. Let me not say we, we are not part of them. But we talk of people who have not yet uh, been born again. Yeah. They are in the nature of sin. Because it's the nature, the genealogy that has started with Adam. Yeah. The one that started with God was corrupted. Yeah. Another one started with Adam. But glory be to Jesus. Amen. That another one again yeah. started with Jesus. Amen. Another genealogy started with Jesus. Amen. And if you are born again, Paul says, the old is gone. The genealogy of Adam also gets overlooked. If sin could overlook the genealogy of God, yeah. why do we doubt that righteousness can overlook the sin, the genealogy of Adam? Yeah. If falling, the fall of man yeah. corrupted the first genealogy of God. Yeah then we must believe the death and resurrection of Jesus yeah. is able to wipe away yeah. the genealogy that started with Adam. Yeah. And that is why we are marvelous. It cannot be otherwise. Yeah. We are marvelous. We are in the very nature of God. Yeah. And if Nicodemus could just look at Jesus and testify, he had not even died and resurrected. He had not been glorified. Yeah. It was actually the same Jesus they had seen growing up Baby Jesus, yeah. the carpenter's son. <laughs> but now he was doing, until Nicodemus testifies, uh, if it, uh, no ordinary man. Yeah. It is not an ordinary teacher who can do the things that you are doing. Yeah. 
If Jesus did those things yeah. and he says greater works, mm -hmm. may our lives testify greater works. Amen. May our lives become a testimony of the new man that we have become. Amen. May our lives become a testimony of the new genealogy in mm. which we have been born. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. We are blessed. Thank you so much uh, for being with us and for that Amen. word. It is, it is a new, it is so revolutionary. We thank God for mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and for the revelation of the word. And thank you for watching us and keeping with us. Yeah. And uh, let's meet next time for yeah. yet some more teaching. It yeah. is always so exciting yeah. when we learn new things. They empower us. They give us understanding of exactly yeah. what we talk about and who we are. Absolutely. This is the Marvelous Believer Show on yeah. Wema TV. Yeah. We are always so blessed to be with you. Yeah. Till next time.